Let's get started. Okay, my name is Mr. Hall. We're here to do maths. I'm going to write a number on the board, and I want you to look at this number because it's really important for my life. I think when you meet people in the class, you may not think they have a lot in common with you, but we often have a lot more in common than you think. So how old are, how old are you, Connor? I ate on Okay, how old are you? 17. 17, okay. When I was 16 years old, 16 years old, my mother earned this amount of money, 3,985 pounds, the equivalent a year. That's what, that's what my mother earned per year when I was 16 years old. No, that wasn't. That was no money. My mother worked as a maid Where are you from? Florida. My mother worked as a maid in Florida, and my mother cleaned people's houses, and she earned $25 a day. She worked five days a week, 51 weeks a year, without any vacation that at all. She earned how much a day? $25? $25? $25 is equivalent of about... Thank you. Because back then it was two dollars. Exactly. Pound. So that's no money at all. That was no money at all. And guess how many siblings I have? I have seven brothers and sisters. There's seven of us in the family. And I am the eldest of seven. My mother had boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl, boy. So there are four boys and three girls. And now there are just three boys because my youngest brother died at age 44 about eight weeks ago. Sure about that, too. Yeah. And he died of steroid use. So you may think well, that was he, was he, massive? he was massive. He was 26 inch arms. He was massive. Oh, yeah, my fuck. brother was, my brother was, I'm the shortest member of the family. But what happened at age 16 was very important. And I tell this story to people because it shows, I think it's really important for you to understand what you can do with an opportunity that happens in your life. So when I was age 16, this is what my mother was earning. We were colossally poor. We weren't just, we weren't, to be honest with you, we weren't poor. We were po. We couldn't even afford the O-R in the word. It was really bad with seven kids. It was really bad, right? And, I, and there were Sundays, <laughs> there were Sundays that we had to go fishing before we could go to breakfast, because I was raised in the country. I never, ever, when I was your age, age 18, the wage you are, Connor, I had never been to a restaurant. When I was 18 years old, I had never seen a movie in my entire life. I was raised completely isolated on a farm. I was raised in such a religious world, a very narrow religious world, so that every Wednesday we went to church. Every Saturday we went to church. Every Sunday we went to church. Every Monday church. It was just the way it was. But what happened to me when I was age 16 would be an event that would change my whole life. I'm going to write this on the board because I want you all to remember this. And then we're going to get to math. Yes, sir. University. You went to Harvard. Yale. Yale. Some of Yale. Yep. Yale University. I went Yale University started a program when I was 16 called Yale Summer High School. And I applied to that program. And much to my shock and surprise, I got into that program. Why don't we put that away? Is that when you found out he was a mathematical genius? No. What I found out was something even more important. This was my ticket out of poverty. It was my ticket out of a whole cycle that I couldn't imagine. What did you say? The ticket for life. It was my ticket for life. Going to, this, going to this program completely transformed my life. Not a little bit, a lot. Now imagine, I was thinner than you are, shorter than you are, right? And I was in this program weighing 99 pounds. That's all I weighed in those days, 99 little pounds. With Yale Summer High School, I discovered several things about myself I didn't know. And one of them was that although I love to talk a lot, what I needed to learn was to focus myself very, very carefully. And that was really important. So one of the things I learned during that experience was about my own self-discipline. I was really, really eager, very much like Kwame. Kwame is somebody who is very, very eager, right? Want to know everything. You, you are very talkative. You want to know everything. But what you need and what I learned from this program and the thing that transformed my life was one phrase. And that phrase was? What phrase did I just write on the board, Kwame? Yes, that's what I learned when I was at Yale.
Why is self-discipline important? Talk to me. Because then you know you can set yourself certain boundaries and you can keep within them. Exactly. And you can achieve your goals. But what was good about this is that it set me on a road that I think is very important for you to understand that you can do. I had really hard knocks in my life. Pardon? Yeah, really hard knocks. I knocks. Yeah, I knocked down to the ground. Knocks. Yeah, knocks I down to the ground. Knocks. Exactly. Some really hard knocks. No. <laughs> no, I think I use a different word for that. But what happened was I was able to take that self-discipline and I was able to use it over my lifetime so that at some point I started to earn real money. I mean, not little money, but real money. And it was all about my self-discipline that enabled me to do it. That's what gave me the skills. So it's not that somebody is necessarily brighter than somebody else. You can be motivated beyond the worth, but you need to have a lot of self-discipline in order to be able to make your dreams come true. Well, let's talk about your dreams for a minute. So you know a little bit about me. What, what do you expect to get out of this program? Um, a better life. A better life? How are you going to make that better life? What, do, what constitutes a better life for you? Money. Money. Oh, what did somebody say? Money. OK, excellent. Connor is absolutely right. And that was a discovery that I had, that indeed you have to make money in order to make your life really good. So what are your money dreams? I want you to write down for me an amount of money that you would like to make that will make you happy. I want to be realistic. Realistic, how to do a billion? Hmm? No, a billion? Well, I, you have, I, only saw, no, so I, no, I just need a million, because then you can turn that million into another million, and then you get into Okay, write it down. Right, no, don't talk. Write the number down. Write the, no, write the number down. What number it's going to take to make you happy? Come on, write the number down. Yeah, how much you want, how much you want to have in savings? Go down. How much? Write, write it down. A million? Everybody wrote. It's so interesting. Everybody wrote down a million dollars, a million pounds. Earning the money is one thing. Holding on to the money is another thing. <laughs> Holding on to it because everybody has demon. Connor. That's my big problem. Okay. I'll get cash, yeah. I'll get it. And it's just like a bit of paper. So I'll buy, I'll buy stuff that I don't need. Like literally, I'll spend like 500 pounds on shit that I just don't need. Like okay, let's talk about this. <laughs> Ronnie? I don't know really. I don't you know? really spend money. Hmm? I don't you, you, you don't really spend money? 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 Last thing I bought I didn't need was probably. Um... The Ferrari. Uh, <laughs> It's okay. just a bunch of clothes. Okay, a clothes. Okay, what about you? I like uh, cigarettes and alcohol. Cigarettes and alcohol. What are your what do you waste money on? Clothes and and junk food. Clothes and junk food, go on. Clothes and nightclubs. Clothes and nightclubs? Food. Food, Chloe? What? what do you waste money on? Uh, cigarettes and alcohol. Cigarettes and alcohol. Kwame, what do you waste money on? I live I waste money on living last. Okay, Jordell. I don't waste money. You don't waste money? Come on, Jake. Clothes. 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 Come on, Danielle. Uh, coffee travel. Travel. Because I can get buses places, but I choose to get the train. It's well expensive. Okay, the train's more expensive. Yeah. Okay, let's look at this. So one of the things I want you to take away from this class, one of my goals is very simple, and that goal is to give you the ability to realize the, your dream of wealth. And one of the things you have to do to realize it is very simple. You have to learn basic math skills. You have to learn it because everything circles around that. Connor can't hold on to his money because there's emotions behind it. Some people overspend on clothes. But if you learn basic math skills, you'll be able not only to earn the money that you want, but to hold on to the money that you want. I still remember the day, I will never forget the day, when I went to my account, my own personal account, and all of a sudden I saw the following number sitting in the bank account. Oh my God. Are you serious? What? Are you serious? Hey, man, a million. Are you my left robber? No. You're not a lying million. or anything, though. No, I'm not lying. This is true. I actually worked and saved and earned it. And what enabled me to do this was a simple thing. I learned basic math skills and I learned to control my own desires oh, that. so that I could save some of the money, enjoy life, and, and continue to be happy. It's all about learning how to control the numbers and understand the numbers. So one of the things I want everybody to do today is to, is to start thinking about how you can use the things you learn in this class to help you become better at realizing your dreams. Like, Jordell here doesn't spend money. So he's the type of person who, over a period of time, will eventually be wealthy. He spend money. He spend 
So our first exercise today is going to be a simple exercise, OK? It's going to be a simple exercise to help me see what level you are functioning at. So here's what I want you all to do as a part of this exercise. Everybody ready? OK, I'm going to give you a simple quiz. You have 20 little problems to do. And then? Oh my god, I'm so bad at math. No, no. There's not any, Danielle, there's no good or bad in this. We just want to see what you're doing. So let's have you work at it for a while. If you need help with anything, raise your hand. I'll come by and help you. OK? <laughs> I can see you as a corpse now, Danielle. <laughs> it's simple addition. All you're doing is adding up these numbers. Is the first one, can I ask a question? Yes, ask a question. Is that first one 457.71? Four, four okay. I've got 447. I put, I've got 457.71. That's what I've got. Yeah. <laughs> I've got the same as well. 457. Yeah, 457.71. Yeah, 457.71. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's doing well. Because that can be 50 because this two right here add up to another 54. So that would add up to another 54. So. <laughs> but you got this one right. That one's perfect. That one's perfect. Yeah. That one. That one's not perfect. That one's not perfect. That one's perfect. Excellent. Excellent. Yep. I'm, I'm, I'm good at maths, man. Yep, good. Good. Let me check that one. This one you changed? No, oh, you went one off. 293. Just write it. Yeah, write it. Write it like she's doing it. Yep. Just write it. Check that last one as well, please. God. May I shake your hand? Four out of four. Brilliant. 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 Woo! Excellent. Well, one is it? Okay, yeah. Yep, but otherwise, yeah. Okay. Other than that, everything is good. Okay, keep going. Keep going. This one? So if it, if it works out, it's perfect. So if it works out right, then this one, all these ones added together, and all these ones added together should make the same answer as that. Bingo. That's right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Excellent. You're almost there. You're not far off. You may, let me see all your answers. No, no, no. Just, see, you need to write them up, but you're not far off. You got the same, you got exactly the same answer that you got. 1154. 1154. Yeah. Yep. You made one error. That's not bad. It's interesting. It's interesting that everybody makes the same error. It's very interesting. Of the three people who got the wrong answer, they all got the same wrong answer. It means everybody's making a consistent mistake. That's interesting. I want you all to, I want you all to know something. For people who say you're not good at maths, you are, are doing amazingly well. You all are doing amazingly well at this. And it's a basic exercise, but it shows that with a little self-discipline that you all can focus and get this done. So already you're learning what I learned when I was at Yale. You're learning exactly what I learned about myself. Bingo. Bingo. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. You write all the other answers down. OK. Yep. You know what's so great about this is that some of you said you were afraid of maths, and some of you are really doing well at it. And I just want to make sure that you understand that you understand that this is the beginning of your ability to free yourself. Today, you broke through an important barrier. The barrier was your fear of maths. I want you to leave here the first day feeling that you have the possibility of making things better. Remember that if you look at me, you know, born in poverty, seven brothers and sisters, mother earning no money, right? But yet I can do it. So can you. Everybody in this room has a possibility of doing what I did with my life. Thank you very much, sir, for your lesson. Thank you for your lesson.